Welcome to the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen, where we share gourmet recipes at a low budget wonder. Now check this out. Here I've got some black seedless nor grapes, some green grapes, and some mandarin oranges. And one of the first things you want to do is take a food grade bucket and clean it with a food grade sanitizer. These sanitizers come in powdered or liquid form and you can just mix them with lukewarm water. Now all you need to do is just pluck all of the grapes, leaving the vine behind, leaving out all stems. Now all you have to do is fill your bucket up partially with water, throw your mandarin oranges in, rinse and wash the fruit. Clean off all the dirt and grime as well as possible pesticides that may be on the fruit. Then strain the water until you have nothing left but clean fruit. Now I'm going to cut up all of my mandarin oranges. And you don't have to use these in your homemade wine. You can practically use just about any fruit you choose to make your wine from. The rule of thumb is to add 3 to 5 pounds of fruit per gallon of wine. I'm expecting about 3 gallons of wine, so I'm adding 12 pounds of fruit. 4 pounds of fruit per gallon. Now all of the fruit needs to be mashed, and you can use something like this, a potato masher, but you can be ingenious and use something like this as well. Mashing by hand is quite difficult and time consuming, so I'm going to use my sausage press. Just several twists of this crank and before you know it, I've got smashed fruit and I've got juice. You can use a juicer if you've got one, but I hear to stay away from blending your grapes. If I remember right, it messes with the tannin. When you're finished, you should have something that looks like this. The bulk of this fruit is called a pomace. As you can see here, I still got uh, some full-size grapes that haven't smashed yet. But that's alright. I'm a little more willing now to go ahead and get in there with that potato masher and get them all mashed up by hand. When that's all done, you want to go ahead and add the water. And it's a 2 to 1 ratio. I'm expecting to make at least three gallons of wine here, so I'm adding two gallons of water. Now here I've got what's called Camden tablets. It's a metabisulfite that's designed to sterilize and preserve the wine. And because it does come in tablet form, we want to smash this into a powder so we can stir it into our wine. But what we're actually making is a must. The wine in its primary stage which is what we're making, is called a must. And you want to just get that Camden tablet stirred in and let this rest for 24 hours before you add anything else to it. Cover it up real good and don't let anything in there. One gnat or fly will turn this whole batch into vinegar. Now here I've got an airlock that's usually filled up with water, but we don't need that right now in this stage, but we do need to go ahead and plug that hole in the top of that lid. Now all we have to do is find a nice cool place where this can rest undisturbed for the next 24 hours. Now here I've got what's called pectic enzyme. It increases juice yield and prevents pectic haze. And it's recommended that you add this an hour before you pitch the yeast. So just get that stirred in real good. Now here I've got your basic wine yeast. On the back here it says that it can make up to five gallons of wine. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to a quarter cup of hot water and about a teaspoon of granulated sugar. And I like to get in there with my fingers and get it stirred up. Pinch in all that yeast to make sure it's completely smooth and let it rest for 10 minutes. In the meantime we need to test the gravity of the must. This measurement will help us determine the alcohol by volume potential. I just fill up about 80% of a test tube here. Then carefully drop in my hydrometer. Give it a quick spin to settle. 
and the top of that liquid will balance out here and show us a reading much like a thermometer would show us the temperature in degrees or Celsius. And it leveled out at 0 .030. And if we take a look at our conversion table here and go down to our 1.030 reading, it says that gives us an alcohol potential of 3.9%. But we need to hit 12% to prevent spoilage. So here's where we're at. That gives us 12 ounces of sugar. But we need to be right here at 0 .090. And that's over 2 pounds of sugar. We need to take this number, subtract it from this number, and that's how much more sugar we need to add per gallon of wine. Now that amount of sugar might be freaking you out right now, but that's how alcohol is made. And just as soon as I've got that all stirred in, I'll take another reading. Without this reading, we cannot determine how much alcohol we have in our wine when it's complete. And if we zoom in here, you can see I'm hitting exactly 0 .090. Now just add that test tube back to the bucket. Now here I've got acid blend and a yeast nutrient. Both of these help aid in yielding a successful fermentation when you pitch the yeast. And as you can see, our yeast is ready to be pitched. So we'll just add that to the bucket here and give that a real good stir. From here on out, it's real critical to make sure you keep this locked down tight. So you're going to need a lid with a rubber gasket in there so you can ensure that it's sealed up. That's why you want to use an airlock filled with water. This allows the CO2 to escape and keeps the oxygen out. Again, you just want to put your bucket in a dark, cool place and rest for 24 hours. By now, if everything's done right, your airlock should be pretty active like you see here. The water bubbling and gurgling like this means you have a successful yeast pitch and you are now officially fermenting and making wine. But let's take a look at what we got. Don't freak out now, you need to do this once a day. See we're bubbling and gurgling inside as well. All good signs. All you have to do is give it a real good stir. You'll see it get real frothy, releasing all that CO2. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Only a minute or so of stirring is all you're going to need to combine all the ingredients again and degas the must a bit. Then you just go ahead and put the lid back on and you repeat this once a day for the next three to four days. Again, storing this in a cool dark place. Best results with temperatures between 68 and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So here we are back again. We stirred this once a day for the last four days. As you can see, the airlock's not that active anymore. And there you have it. How to make wine the primary phase right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients.